Finally, in this section, let's learn one more concept about web development and how the web pages are rendered in the browser or by any other client. Let's learn about different ways of page rendering. When we make a request to the server, we generally expect to see some UI on the client. Here, let's take an example of browser as a client. So when we make a request from the client to the server, we expect some kind of UI to be displayed in the browser. This UI is generally created using HTML and CSS, right? So when we request a web page from the server, the server generates some HTML along with CSS and returns it in the response to the browser. The browser then renders that HTML and CSS and displays a UI accordingly to the user. Here, the HTML and CSS was generated at the server and was sent back to the client in the response. So this is called as server side rendering because here the web page was created on the server and then the web page was sent in the response. On the other hand, more recent websites are generally using client side rendering. In a client side rendered website, clients make a request to the web API to request data from the server. Generally, this data is in JSON format. And once the client has the data, it uses front end frameworks or libraries like Angular, React, Vue, etc. To generate the UI along with the fetch data and then simply renders it in the browser in the client and this is called as client side rendering because here the web page is created at the client side the server only sends the requested data and not HTML or CSS this approach of client side rendering is now used by many web applications nowadays because it is faster and has many other advantages now you might ask why I want to talk about server side or client side rendering in this ASP.NET course? Well, because we should know what kind of application we can create with the technology in hand. Using ASP.NET Core, we can create both server-side rendered application and client-side rendered application. If we want to create server-side rendered application using ASP.NET Core, there we use ASP.NET Core MVC. But if we want to create a client-side rendered application using ASP.NET Core, there we use ASP.NET Core Blazor. And in this course, since we are going to learn about ASP.NET Core with MVC, we should know what a server-side rendered website is. Because using ASP.NET Core MVC, we are going to create a server-side rendered website. We are going to generate the view, the HTML on the server side. And since we are going to talk about server-side rendering, I also thought that we should also know what is a client-side rendering and we can differentiate between them. Okay, so let's try to understand how the server-side and client-side rendering works. And let's start with server-side rendering. Now keep in mind, whenever we create a web application, there will always be a client and a server. So when we create a server-side rendered website, on the server, we usually have a database for storing application-related data like users, products, orders, etc. Then on the server, we also have a backend application. This backend application can be built using ASP.NET Core, Node.js, PHP, etc. So here you can think of this backend application as ASP.NET Core MVC application. This backend application has logics written to handle the incoming requests, fetch data from the database or create a new record in the database or update or delete an existing record along with many other things. Usually on the server, we also use some kind of templating engine to generate a dynamic web page. For example, ASP.NET Core MVC uses Razor View engine. In Node.js, you can use Pug templates, etc. So the backend application builds each page which the user has requested using a predefined template generated by templating engine and the data fetched from the database. Keep in mind that here we are not serving a static HTML content to the client. Here, HTML content is generated dynamically by the templating engine and it also includes the data retrieved from the database. So each time the browser requests a web page, the web page is built using HTML, CSS and JavaScript along with images and the data from the database and it is sent back to the browser in the response. And then the browser renders that dynamically generated HTML and shows it to the user. This whole process is called as server side rendering because here the web page which is rendered in the browser that has been created on the server. So when we use ASP.NET Core with MVC, we are creating a server side rendered website because here the views which we will create that is generated on the server with the help of Razor View Engine. And then that view is served to the client in the response. Okay, so here this template is going to be the Razor View Engine. Using that template, we are going to create, we are going to build views. And with the help of that, 
the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files will be created and that will be sent in the response. So as you can see, the web page is created on the server and that's why it is called as server side rendering. Now let's talk about client side rendering. Again, we have a client and a server in case of client side rendered website also. On the server, we have a database. This database is similar to what we have in case of server side rendered website. This database also stores application related data like users, products, orders, etc. Then on the server, we also have a backend application. But this backend application is generally a web API. This web API has logics to perform CRUD operation on the database. Basically, using this web API, you can fetch data from the database or you can add, update or delete data in the database. So each time a client makes a request to this backend application, that is to this web API, it will fetch data from the database and it will send it back to the client. In that sense, both server side rendered website and client side rendered website are same. But the big difference here is that in this case, in case of a client side rendered website, we are only sending the data which was fetched from the database in the response. We are not sending any HTML in the response. And this data which we send in the response is usually in JSON format. So in case of a client side rendered website, we generally send JSON data in the response and not any HTML. When we create a client side rendered website, there are always two steps involved, building an API and consuming that API. So in the first step, we created a web API which is hosted on the server. Now on the client side, the web page is assembled by plugging the data which we received from the server into some sort of template. These templates are usually built using some front-end framework or library like Angular, React, Vue, etc. And then that page is rendered in the browser. So you see, when building this kind of website, the building phase of the web page is kind of moved from server to client. And that's why these kind of websites are called as client side rendered website. Because here, the web page is generated on the client side. So here we learned how the server side rendered website is different from a client side rendered website and how they actually work behind the scenes. Now, both of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. We are not going to go into that and you can use one over the other based on the requirement. But from this lecture, now at least you have an idea of what kind of application you are going to build using ASP.NET Core and MVC. And this simple concept which we have learned in this lecture, it is going to help you a lot in understanding the flow of how the ASP.NET Core MVC applications work. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.